Hello and welcome to Typographical Design. This is Vladimir, your instructor for CAOT 113. And we are doing typographical design, which we are basically working with text. The most important thing that you need to understand out of this chapter is how to work with text and creating a clipping mask and how to place text on an actual uh, path. And don't worry about creating paths right now because we'll, uh, we'll create a lot of path when we use the pen tool in the upcoming chapters. So let's go ahead and get this project started. I'm going to go ahead and open my file, which I'm going to open the start file to show you how it's supposed to look. This is what we have to work with. And I'm going to go file open also, I'm going to open the end file to show you how it's supposed to look after we get done. Notice the text, notice the graphics, and notice the words. Okay, so let's get started with this, right? Let's go ahead and start uh, creating this layout. So we have our text. And the first thing we are going to do is we are a going to rename the file and then we are going to actually create a grid that we're going to be working with. And the grid is relatively easy to create. If you don't have the ruler showing, we're going to go to view and we make sure that the ruler is showing like right now the ruler is not visible. Go to view and turn on your ruler. Double click in this corner, will zero out the ruler. Notice if, if double clicking the corner does not zero out the ruler and you want something else, you can always right click and drag to the corner. I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag to the nose. Watch what happens with the ruler. The, the ruler will zero out based on her nose. Look at that zero part right there and zero, right? So if I want to zero it out based to the left edge, I'm just going to double click and it zeroes out, the ruler zeroes out to the top edge, left edge. Now I'm going to create a grid line. And it's easy to create a grid line. If you want a horizontal one or a vertical one, just go into the margins on the ruler, left click and drag. And they want this particular one at 4.25, so there's four, there's four and a half, 4.25 is right there. And there's the grid line. You wanna change the color of the grid line? You can. Go ahead, select the move tool, double click the grid line, and you can change your grid line colors in this tool. Remember, it's under preferences and grid lines, grid selections, and you can change the grid line. We're not going to change it. We're just going to leave it alone. And now the next step we're going to do is we're going to put some text right on top. We're going to go ahead and use a text tool, right? And you can set the settings now or you can set the settings later. I'm going to set the settings later, but the book is going to have you do the settings now. And I'm going to go right onto this line and I'm going to click once and I'm going to start typing. And the word we're typing is the digital, right? And look how small it is. We can barely see it. So let's go ahead and it's black right now. Let's go ahead and select the font size. Let's go ahead and go 144 like the book wants us to create, right? Digital. And let's go ahead and select um, the actual uh, style that we're going to have this text as uh, bold. Let's go ahead and do a bold. And let's go ahead and let's change some additional settings of the text like tracking. And notice right here we have tracking is the VA and we're going to set that to 100 which makes it really loose. See how loose it is now between the letters? Right? So now that we've done, done that we're going to select 
commit. And notice how it's a little bit lopsided. So I'm going to use the move tool and I'm going to move it down a little bit. Kind of like to move it down just like so. And notice how it's on top of our character, right? Well, let's go ahead and drag it behind her hair, just like that. So the text appears behind. Look how nice that looks. Um, I'm going to drag the text a little bit more. I'm going to select the text layer and I'm going to use my keyboard to slightly adjust the actual text so it looks a little bit more centered. I just went ahead and adjusted to the left a little bit, fine tune adjustments, right? And there is my text. The next part of this exercise is going to be very important and we're going to create something new another mask and this mask is called a clipping mask and a clipping mask well let's go ahead and create it and you see what it'll do let's go ahead and insert or embed a circuit board and the clipping mask we're going to put a clipping mask we want the digital to look like a circuit board so let's go ahead and create there we go just like that I want to have these lines happening in the digital suit. I'm kind of uh, modifying it, right? And now we have a circuit board on top of the word digital. Notice right now it's a smart object. If you want to get rid of the smart object, you can go ahead and rasterize it, uh, rasterize layer. And if you click the right click on not the letters, not the actual image, but in this blank space, you have an option to create a clipping mask. As soon as you create a clipping mask, notice this little arrow appears and it points to digital. It's a clipping mask that sits on top of the digital. Notice what happened to our word, digital. We can select the clipping mask and actually move it around a little bit to see how you want it, you know, to see what's going to be kind of cool looking. And I like this digital right here. See that? I'm just selecting the clipping mask and I'm moving it around. See that if I move it all the way out, you have digital visible in black, right? Our original. And look at our clipping mask right behind there that we're right now gonna modify and make it look. Let's see how cool I can make it look. There we go. I kind of like this right here. Uh, there we go. I like that. Like that. See that it's all the lines and digital, right? Or I can move it down a little bit and see how it looks like this, digital, right? Like the circuit board, did it give you the circuit board look, right? So the next thing we're gonna do is, that was it. That was the clipping mask. Did you guys blink? Okay, I hope not. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna click on digital and we're gonna add a special effect. And the special effect they're gonna do is either inner shadow, or inner glow. I think they're gonna do an inner shadow. It doesn't matter which ones you select because you can always say, oh, I wanna do a strike, I wanna do an inner shadow. So let's go ahead and do an inner shadow on the word digital. And uh, there's a lot of options they're gonna give us. And we're just gonna go ahead and select opacity 48, 18 and 16, right, settings, right? And we can create create the shadow. Notice there's a lot of options. We don't go through all the options, but it's kind of cool to play with these different shadows and how they look. If you look at the word digital, look how they change every time I select a new curve. Look at that, it looks kind of cool, right? Look at this nice S curve, double peak, little bumpy, and it just looks really cool as you're selecting different curves. I'm gonna select a slightly different curve than the book because I kind of like it better this, this way. It's, you know, it is what it is, you know. And that is our special effects. And we created an inner shadow, right? There is the inner shadow, the effect. We can turn it off, turn it on, and see how that looks. So now, we're gonna do something. We're gonna put some text on the path. The path was already created for us. So let's not worry about how they created it. We're gonna cover that in the next chapter. So let's go ahead and click on path and you see there's a speech path. We are going to click on our text tool and we're gonna to select the text size that we want 
And at this particular point, we want 14. We want it white. So I'm selecting the text to be white, 14. Uh, we're going to have regular text. Yeah, 14 sharp. Very good. Everything looks good. Tracking will be zero. Right? Uh, and let's see. That's about it. That's all I'm going to do for now. And I'm going to, oh, they want the actual tracking negative 100, negative 10. So let's go ahead and give that to them, negative 10. That's what they have us set the tracking to. And if you don't see this box, again, this box is uh, when you select the text tool and you're in text tool mode, there's this little folder with little options. And that brings up the more options for your text tool. Uh, and now we're going to go ahead and select the speech path and we see this pattern. You see that? When we move our text tool to this pattern, notice our text tool looks like a little curvy line appears. That means we're about to type on the path. Let's go ahead and type on the path. And I'm going to go to the right and let's go ahead and start typing. And notice I made a mistake. I'm not seeing the type. So let me go back to layers and let me go ahead and bring, bring the layers up. Actually, let me go ahead and delete this layer. Let me select the path tool. There's the path tool. I'm going to go ahead and click on it. I'm going to make a right path and let's go ahead and start typing. So I'm going to start typing and what am I typing? Uh, what's new with games? Question mark. Am I typing? I don't think I was typing because I don't see my tool. It says it's there. I don't see it. Where? What happened to it? Oh, it gave it a name, but where's the actual path that I typed? Well, that is strange. Where is that? Notice I do not see it. I thought I typed it. Let's go ahead and select the tool and see what's going on. Let me see, where is that? See, I'm not seeing it. Where is, where is my, there's my path. There is my type tool. I'm going to be typing using this type tool. Uh, it's 14 points. There we go. There's my lorem epsom. And now I'm going to type What's new with games? There we go. That's what I wanted. And I'm going to adjust it because it's not taking up the full path. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust it a little bit more. Let's go ahead and do 15. Let's do negative 20. Let me go ahead and make sure I select this and do negative 15. Let's see how that looks like. Nope, let's go ahead and do negative seven. How about zero? How about 10? There we go. It, now it's starting to look a little bit better. I'm just trying to make this take up the full space. So let's go ahead and do 15. There we go. And that looks good. So I changed the tracking and I 
and I changed the tracking and I changed a little bit of horizontal scaling, right? So now I'm gonna click on the games portion and I'm gonna go ahead and select bold. I'm gonna make this bold because that's what they want. And what happened with my, there we go and perfect. I'm just playing around with this, you know, uh, just trying to play around to see how it's going to look. So there is what's up with games, right? So now we're going to take this, um, I, don't forget to click commit. I'm going to take this and make a copy of it. I'm just going to hold down the alt key and make two copies of that. And one of them is going to be a copy and I'm going to say games. One is going to say, one is going to say something different. Let me see what it's going to say. Oh, music. Right. So I'm going to come in here and select the music one. Drag it a little bit up. I'll, I'll resize them in a few minutes. There's the music. Come on, where's my music? There's the music on top. I'm going to go ahead and put the music on top. Games in the middle. And let's go ahead and I'm just rearranging them. There we go. Games, music, right? All rearrange. So right here is going to be music. This is games. And the last one is going to be phone. So I'm going to rename this to phones. Perfect. So there's my three uh, different, uh, what she's saying. And it looks kind of boring right now. So let's go ahead and use an edit and do a free transform on that. And I'm just going to go ahead and kind of hold down the control and give it some space. I'm going to take commit on that, select music, edit free transform. And I'm going to go ahead commit to that. I'm going to go ahead and click on this, edit free transform one more time, cancel. Edit free transform one more time. And I'm going to bring this up a little bit and I'm going to select okay. And I'm even going to change this one right here, edit free transform, uh, cancel, come on. Edit, free transform, there we go. Like right in the middle. Perfect, and I'm gonna accept that. Now the next thing they have us do is to right click and do uh, some kind of um, uh, word wrap text, right? So we can do it multiple ways. We can double click the text, go to tools, and we are into wrap text, right? We, I just basically double click the text and see this little T that has a little uh, wrap on it that opens up the wrap, wrap text or you can just go ahead and right click and say wrap text. Over here, you can select the wrap type of text you want. Uh, I think they have, they want a, a wave and they have us do some settings in here. Uh, what settings do they want us to set? Okay, so they want us 33 and they want us to say negative 23 and I think they want it five. I mean, this is up to your liking, but they want us to go ahead and do this wrap text on everything. So let's go ahead and give them the wrap text that they want on everything. So this is 33, negative 23 and they want five, 23. That's a negative. And then the, the, this is a five, right? And the same thing they want on the last one, wrap text. We're gonna go ahead and select it. 
33, 5, negative 23. Okay, so So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look and we are going to add a little more grids. So let's go ahead and go back to the zoom tool and just say click quickly hit on um, hit on fit screen. And there is my fit screen. And the next thing we're going to create is more grid lines. The next grid line they want us to place about a quarter inch in from the edge. And that's right about there. If you can't get it perfectly, zoom in, right? Go ahead, zoom in. A quarter inch would be right there. A quarter inch is 0.25, right? Two five, where's my two five? There's my quarter inch. Perfect, right? And the other line they want at two inches. So I'm gonna drag and put the line at two inches. I'm looking on the left-hand side. That's, for, that's close enough. Okay, so there is, it forms a little box. Into this box, we're going to place some text. So let's go ahead and find where we're gonna get the text. Notice this little note on the bottom this contains our text. If we double click it, there's all the text we're gonna copy. I'm gonna copy that text, right? That's what's coming from this note. And now I'm going to bring it to my drawing. I'm gonna go right here. And, oh, control C, hold on. Copy the text. Copy. And now I'm going to actually use the text to paste it. I'm gonna draw a square. Notice the square is not, I'm using the space bar to align the corners. There they are. And I'm just gonna drag it all the way to the bottom. Right, there we go. There's my box, my text box. And I'm pasting text into there, control V and my text is in place. It looks a little small. I can't see it very well, but it's there. I'm gonna go ahead and place it above the head, right? And now we're gonna start formatting this particular text. So they want us to format this at 70 points. So this right here is going to be 70 points. So let's go ahead and give them that. 70 points and they want it to use Let's see, how does it look? 70 points, font size 70, and what else do they want? 70, and they want leading 55, so let's go ahead and find leading. There's tracking, and there is scaling. There's my leading, they want 55. So they want it pretty tight. Do they want everything to be 55? Let's see. Select the first three lines, only the first three lines, and they want the tracking to be at 50. So they want the tracking at 50, and they want it right aligned, and this is right aligned. Yes, it is right aligned. So there's 50, and the color white, perfect. The next thing they want us to do is bold the trend. So go ahead and select trend and select bold. And now the trend is bold. The next thing they want us to do, what did I do with my digital? Did I, did I, oh, my digital went, what happened with my digital? Oh, my digital got really small for some reason. So let's go back. Let's go ahead and put our digital to 70. Let's go ahead and put it to uh, 144. And we had bold for the, I think I accidentally somewhere in all of this excitement, I changed my font 
on my digital. So digital is supposed to be 144, 144. There we go. And it needs to be a little looser, 50, right? Let's go ahead and give it, make it a little bit more looser. Let's go ahead and make it 55. And let's go ahead and increase the tracking a little bit. There you go. Let's go ahead and do the 60. There we go. There's my digital, right? So the reason I wanted to bring it back is because the strand line, the strand is supposed to have the color of the digital. So I'm going to select the color on the text and I'm gonna use the eyedropper to select this green. And there is my green text, right? For the trend. And this needs to be bold. And what's not is also bold. But what font do they want this all? They want all of this to be font 22. So let's go ahead and give it font 22. And let's go ahead and say it's going to be a regular font, right? Except for what's hot. Again, I have to redo the bold because I just reset the font. And let's go ahead and create this to be bold. Now, uh, the leading for all of these fonts, they want the leading for all of this to be 28 points. So let's find out. The leading is right here, 28. 28 points, font size 22. Tracking, they want zero. There's my zero. And they want it all caps. It is all caps, right? So this is what it looks like at this moment. So I think the next thing they want us to create is a volume, right? And they want us to go ahead and add a rounded rectangle. And how do they, we're gonna do that? We're going to go ahead and use the rectangle tool to add that. So let's go ahead and find where is our rectangle tool where is that let's find it i'm trying to find it where is it there's a crop there's a lassos there's a note tool text tool and there's the rectangle tool. So we got a rectangle tool and we're going to go ahead and select this rectangle right up in here. And right here is where we get to select the color of the rectangle and where it's rounded. So we want it rounded on the left bottom portion and Let's go ahead and select the rounding level to 67 pixels. Control Z, notice everything got rounded, it became an oval. So let's go ahead and unclick this link. And now nothing, none of the numbers are linked. Now we can go ahead and hit 67 and only one side is rounded. But they don't want 67, they want something less. So I have to find, I think maybe it's 16 they want. Let's find out. There is 16, right? And the width of this thing is supposed to be 67. So let's go ahead and put 67 for the width. What is the height? The height is 236. So let's go ahead and unlink the height and go 236. Then they want zero and they want the X axis to be 1582. So they want this at 1582. 
pixels. So they want it right on top. And the color they want is, let's see which color they want. I say they want a little bit of a yellow color. Uh, let me find a yellow color they might want. I'm just going to go ahead and pick one. There we go. Let's see how that looks. There's, there's the color they want, right? And they want it, uh, let's see, what else do they want? They want three pixels, one pixel, that doesn't really matter. And that is it, right? So we got a little triangle, uh, a little, not triangle, our, what is this called? Rectangle, right? The next thing we're gonna do is go to the tool, text tool, and go horizontal tool, uh, excuse me, vertical tool. And we are going to type Let's go ahead and make this. Oh, notice there's a blue outline in it. Let's, we'll fix it in a second. But let's go ahead and fix this. Nine. B O L nine. Okay, let's go ahead and fix this little area right here. There's the collar. Let's try to fix this. V O L nine. Let's go ahead and increase the size to 16 so we can see it. Let's go ahead and use a move tool. Move all nine. We want to move this a little bit to the edge. There we go. I'm going to use the keyboard for the volume nine. And I'm not liking the way it looks right now. So let's go ahead and create bold, see if it looks better. And I'm gonna move it down a little bit. There we go, that looks much better. There is my volume nine. There we go. It was so small we couldn't see it. So now we do see it. And the, is the color right on the triangle? Yes, it is. Click OK. Perfect. Let's see, what else can we do? Um, that's all there is to it. That is it. So let's go ahead and get rid of the grid lines view and just we can can just clear the grid lines or we can go ahead and um, actually uh, not view the grid lines. Let's see, ruler, extra, let's get rid of the extra, snap to uh, lock grid lines, clear grid. I don't want to clear them, I just don't want to see them. So I went ahead and selected, do not show extra, which are the grid lines. There are the grid lines. Again, I didn't get rid of them because I might use them for something else, right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and view how it looks. 
that completed work. That's all there is to it. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and email me. And uh, this is chapter seven, typographical design.